the kind of packet you want, that you want to impersonate. So in this case, we're going to look at for select queries, OK? We're going to look for select queries, and then we're going to take those select queries apart, and we're going to figure out what changes. In that select query, obviously, I see the select statement. I see the, the actual query information. That I want to change. That I want to change to my own, to my own command. But there's also a lot of other stuff in the, in the packet that I'm going to want to change. Um, for net eight queries, the sled is basically, the logic is, we need to change the TNS length. We need to change this command length that we found, that we identified. It's the first byte of user data minus one. We need to change that to, to match whatever size our command is. And then there's also another command length somewhere between offset 24 and 26. It's a variable. Um, because you know what to look for based on this, you could use a regex or you could use a search to find that. Um, this is stuff that's pulled out of ThickNet. Uh, this is where we're actually changing. You notice it's the data. It's actually doing a, re a regular expression, and then it changes it. We put the sled text in here, change command to supplied value. We're putting in, so in that example, we're putting in that, that add user query, or command, and then we're going to inject it on the wire. Um, so basically, when you do this, you're obviously going to cut the other guy off. Now, because we're in the middle, what ThickNet does is it's able to say, once we inject, no longer pass those packets through to the other guy, right? So, so at that point, you're, you're, you, again, you have to acknowledge, you have to actually send back the SIN, the SIN, or the, the, the ACK statements in the proper order. You have to keep track of sequence numbers. So um, just uh, going to wrap up my part here. If uh, it, one thing that that if you're going to take away from this is identifying sled values, this is a really good way to do it, right? There's three basic things that, are, that you're going to find in, in the stuff that's not session static. If you see a, a value changing, it's either going to be a link field, a sequence field, or a checksum, OK? And these are kind of guides on how to find those. Link fields will generally go up incrementally. Uh, I'm sorry, it, link fields will describe how long the command is. And they'll be the same. If you, if you do the same command, it'll be the same length. Sequence fields increment. And checksums are kind of like the, the last case. If, if those other two don't match, you're going to be looking at whether they're, che they're checksum. So again, ThickNet is the tool. Um, Wendell's going to be talking about the downgrade aspects of this. But it does injection. It also does downgrade. Um, there's obviously always improvements to be made, but it's a pretty good start. It, 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 works, it works very well for what it does. So um, with that, I'll, I'll hand it over to you, Wendell. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. So Thank sorry. you. OK. Hi. OK. Uh, we'll be talking about the downgrade stuff. Focus on Oracle. Uh, the first is a demo. This one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, basically, we are doing their poison, similar to the other example. We are running ticknet, and on this side, we have a real client uh, connecting to a. Uh, Oracle database, you can see with a valid user and the valid password, user hack, and password K-A-Z-W-S-X. Uh, the connection was normally, uh, and it's working independently of the attack. If you get to TickNet, we can see that the downgrade happened, and you can get the session key and the password hash. Uh, what you should note is that this format is not common. If you take a look, that database version, that Oracle, is a new Oracle version. And this hash is for an old Oracle on the age of the 8 release that uses this data encryption standard. So we executed the downgrade attack to obtain the hash in a much weaker way uh, that will help us to break this hash. Now, basically, we'll be copying it just to make it more clear for you uh, how someone can use this, this hash that was obtained during the attack. We'll be saving it in a file. Uh, this file basically is a, a file that will be used in a password cracking utility to try to recover that, the, that credential. We put the name of the user, that's hack, 
as you see, and the session key and the, the password hash itself. We save it. Or above is a third party application. It's open for everyone to download that is able to crack different Oracle password hashes. In this case, uh, we are calling the application or above with our hashed file. Uh, and in this case, just a simple uh, dictionary and the format 8 from the, the 8 dictionary, uh, the 8 version of the Oracle. And then we can see the password recovery. Uh, on the end, oops, yep, right there, key A Z W U S X. Okay, that's fine. Uh, how it works? Uh, start from this one. Yeah. Okay. Well, basically, uh, when we start a session between Oracle, it in general works on the port fifteen twenty one. Uh, however, there are environments where uh, it's changed, so or two will be a bit less efficient. In general, the first packet from the client to the server is a connect packet that's pretty similar to this PC that we see here. There are some information like the protocol, the name of the host, port, the connect data, uh, CD, etc. Uh, and below is the second packet uh, that can be a redirect or a resend. In this case, it's sending a redirect. Uh, and it's redirecting to a different port, 1563. On this case, TicNet would be useless since it will not be able to follow uh, the sequence of the communication. So in this case, we use uh, two small solutions uh, to solve the problem. The first is look at the connect packets and then look at the redirect packets and the grab this port that is offered on the redirect packet and just add it on the lists of the, the ports that will be listening to execute the attacks. And the second the option, is just uh, create a kind of signatory uh, for a common Oracle communication. So for example, we establish a, a big number of ports that you'll be listening. And if you find a signature like that, that on the essential is something pretty, uh, a signature basically of a query like that, for example, description, address list, etc., that's pretty common on the first packets of the Oracle, we will be able to detect it in any kind of ports it's running. Uh, we just need a small number of variations to grab all the, all the connect, connections, maybe two or three variations of that first connect packet. So we'll be able to track Oracle connections in different ports without problems. Well, uh, while it's useful, there is some problem. Uh, as you, you saw, uh, Steve was demonstrating a kind of injection, injection on the fly in a live session, uh, and he created a, a user. However, think, what about the application that's batched? Uh, for example, there are some environments where the applications pretty, close, pretty fast connect to a database, send a query, get a result, and they close the connection so fast you don't have time to go there on the TicNet session and insert some evil comment because the session will be closed before you do it. So we found another solution for that. Uh, when you close a connection with Oracle, it's, it's not like just uh, it send a thing packet. There is a kind of things, uh, a protocol inside the Oracle itself. Basically. The client sent to server that kind of packet with that 030915. Uh, that's like, hey, I want to close the connection. And the server uh, has a kind of packet that's uh, no legend, that's the second. And finally, uh, the session is terminated. What we do when we are, we are on the man in the middle, we just check for this packet that's request for close the connection. And we never delivers it to the server. We just send a fake one like that for the client. So the client closed the connection transparently. Uh, but we keep the connection open to send an injection on the filter, on the filter for, the, for the, the Oracle. Well, uh, as I told you, we have some small variations, but this can work in different, different attacks. Well, basically, it's. I'm moving very fast because I have just 10 minutes, OK? Uh, here's how works a basically connection with Oracle when we connect to a database. Basically, you have a connect packet from client to server, and the server sends back a resend packet like, hey, send it again to me on the same port, or a redirect like, hey, uh, send it again, but on that port or on that host because I am just the dispatcher. Uh, then both uh, the client sends again the connect packet 
and consequently, uh, the server sends the accept package. They negotiate, they negotiate one stuff called the SNS that you'll see in more details, and then they exchange their versions, and consequently, representation and credentials. Well, uh, all this information was used, uh, based on trial and error. Uh, that downgrade you you seen on the previous demo uh, did the downgrade to back to the Oracle 8 that uses the, uh, this data encryption standard. That's that's the goal of our downgrade. Basically, there are different ways to do downgrade at Oracle. If you are using JDBC, uh, that's one of the, the well-known attacks. It's a common awesome session key. You can see the difference of the size uh, from this one on the example that was pretty short. It's one from Oracle 10 or 11, 11 probably. Uh, basically, what happens on the JDBC, there's a space field here that's marked, uh, that's marked as eight. If you just replace this byte, uh, oops, with a zero, zero, what happens is that the, the whole protocol will, will be downgraded, and on the end you have, you have uh, the, weak, uh, the weak authentication, like a data encryption standard, like this, out, uh, this out session key. See the difference of the size from the first, and the second, and the consequently, as it's much more weaker, the password the cracking is much more faster because the algorithm is weak, weaker. Well, uh, a very basically uh, description about the signature to implement this attack is the following. We check for the kind of version, if it's version one or 34, because in new versions it does not work, and we check if there is a JDBC field on the connect data inside the Oracle, inside the Oracle, and we just replace uh, this content, that's this zero weight, for this zero zero, and the attack will happen transparently. Well, okay, uh, what about instant client? Uh, instant client is a kind of a more new fashion of, your, uh, of clients for Oracle, and they have a, a lot of people is using it recently, uh, because it's, Easy to install, easy to download, has SQL Plus, uh, SDK software development kit, etc. Uh, unhappily, this technique uh, doesn't work on this. <laughs> so, uh, we will be using a different technique. Basically, what we offer for this kind of attack is the following. Uh, we are, uh, while we are on the man in the middle, we just fake for the client that we are a fake old uh, Oracle 8 database. So we drop all the packets from the server and you just insert some packets uh, that's, that's, that uh, pretends to be like a Oracle 8 in a way that you'll be forcing the client to negotiate like, a, uh, like if it was an uh, OD8 database. Consequently, we can get the, the, the password hashes on the old format of that, in, that, uh, that encryption standard again. However, it will be displaying a message uh, after the, the negotiation. So the negotiation will not be really concluded, the session, but uh, we will obtain this data. Also, we can mitigate this attack or minimize the impact and, and the problem with something like, for example, we can create some kind of filters, like, hey, do not apply the same attack two times for the same user or just trigger some special usernames, etc. Well, uh, for full client, the same happens. Uh, the attack also doesn't work very well. Uh, if you look at the results with the full client, if you look with, with the older versions like 90, uh, the attack, the, downgrade, the second downgrade attack works fine. Uh, on, the, on the 10 release, it crashes and appears to be a heap overflow. And on the 11, the connection is just terminated. However, neither of these techniques works against instant client for Windows. So, what about, uh, about Oracle for Windows? It's safe, no way to do nothing? No, that's wrong. Uh, we found another way. Uh, to inject this, to, to execute a downgrade in a transparent way. So nothing uh, will be broken, the connection will keep working, uh, and the downgrade also works fine. Basically, uh, inside the Oracle protocol, there's a small field called the acceptable protocol version. Uh, to say the truth, in all the, the cases that we tested, this value is always in the same way, independently if it's a 8, 9, 10, or 11 version, version of Oracle. They always offer uh, the 06 as a version, uh, and the client also, uh, the server always responds with uh, 06, and then 06.54.321, as we can see here. So it's a very, very standard, happened uh, in all the versions that we tested. Uh, just to test, we have the idea uh, to change that, and we modified on the first pack, 